Senator Morlock, I hope you will not uh, um, mind if I turn the committee over to a member of your party for a temporary measure. He might. Tot scenes. Tot scenes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. Uh, Friday morning, I had the privilege of going to uh, the 50th anniversary of the Sawdust Festival in Laguna Beach with uh, the birthday boy, uh, Assemblyman Matt Harper. And uh, on that drive, uh, you, you notice how many electric poles there are and how many wires there are on a winding road. It's sort of similar to going from Salinas to Monterey uh, in some beautiful uh, natural areas. Uh, and it's fire season. And we e actually even uh, had a fire on that very road yesterday afternoon, uh, which uh, brings this all more uh, to the forefront. But we've had uh, the Kern County fire that uh, uh, has, it's cost, it costs the state a million dollars a day for these fires. We, were, we want to try and uh, address that. But since 2007, Laguna Canyon Road alone has had 46 vehicle collisions that have hit these overhead poles. I don't know if it's DUI, if it's falling asleep, if it's avoiding a deer or a coyote, uh, but when, a, when an electric line is uh, uh, busted and, and made available, uh, they can cause wildfires. Uh, in 2015, the California's seventh most destructive wildfire was the Butte Fire, and it was caused by an electrical line that was broken and, and started the fire. So I believe we can maintain open space and have nice uh, residences uh, and, and in areas. Uh, we just have to be very careful. And one way to be careful is to address the overhead electric lines and ask the CPUC to put a higher priority on undergrounding in areas with highly concentrated populations. And that's not the only solution, but one of the solutions that we should be looking at. Uh, so Senate Bill 1463 is an opportunity for our state's electrical utilities to work with CAL FIRE and impacted cities and communities to be more proactive in protecting our wilderness areas. We've worked with all the stakeholders. We've kept everyone apprised of changes based on constructive amendments. And I have a witness, uh, uh, Ms. Corey Williams from Townsend Public Affairs. Thank you. My name is Corey Williams with Townsend Public Affairs, representing the bill sponsor, the City of Laguna Beach. SB 1463 is a common sense fire safety measure that is needed to get the PUC and utility companies to develop and implement enhanced fire mitigation measures in very high fire hazard severity zones across the state. The CPUC has spent the last eight years developing a fire map that they call Fire Map 1, which was approved on May 16th of this year. It is to be followed by Fire Map 2 that will build on Fire Map 1. Fire Map 1 is so deficient in delineating areas of high risk deserving of enhanced fire mitigation measures that it is critical for the legislature to step in and pass SB 1463. It is important to note that despite the fact that the city of Laguna Beach has long been designated as a high fire severity zone by CAL FIRE, we are identified on Fire Map 1 as a low risk area. Likewise, the city of Calabasas is also recognized as a high fire hazard severity zone by CAL FIRE, but it is not recognized as a high fire zone by Map 1 by the PUC. As you know, Calabasas experienced a 516 acre fire, the old fire only a few weeks ago. Um, in addition, as Senator Hill has confirmed, Fire Map 1 does not designate the origin of last summer's devastating Butte fire as a high-risk area. It is critical that the legislature direct the PUC to take into consideration the concerns of local governments and fire departments as it determines which areas across the state are at high risk fire for fire and to prioritize those areas for enhanced mitigation measures to prevent further utility fires. We need your help to ensure the safety of our community as well as many other communities across the state that are recognized as high fire risk zones. As the Senator mentioned, we are already in another dangerous fire season with fires that have been raging in Southern California for the last several weeks. So we believe that the time to act is now. I respectfully ask for your support of this bill. Thank you. Are there any other uh, witnesses in support of the bill? Stacey Heaton, Rural County Representatives of California in support. Thank you. Any other witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Vice Chair, members, Bernie Orozco with the California Cable and Telecommunications Association. Uh, CCTA has uh, been opposed to the measure in the past because we wanted to make sure that it was narrowed to just those areas that are uh, prone to wildfires due to overhead electrical lines. Uh, the bill was amended in the assembly, or was proposed to be amended, adopted in this committee, that would narrow that focus to be consistent with that concept. When that is in print, we will remove our opposition. Thank you. Thank you. Any other witnesses in opposition? Uh, and then I, I did, I want to, uh, Senator, if you, I've, staff has uh, mentioned to me that you did accept some amendments that, um, I guess, in utilities that we're putting into the bill today. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. To the committee. Uh, I'd like to uh, move the bill and respectfully ask to be added uh, as a co-author, if I can. Well, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, second. So you have a motion, a second. We have a support, support. Uh, Senator, uh, you are agreeing to accept the amendments. Uh, would you like to close? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the timeliness of this bill is pretty profound, uh, considering the temperature and the activities. And uh, I think it's a good way for the legislature to communicate to the residents of California that we're reacting positively to make some positive changes. So I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. The motion is to do, pa uh, do pass as amended. If the clerk can call the roll, please. Do pass as amended and re refer to appropriations. Williams, Jones, aye. Jones, I, Garcia, aye. Garcia, I, Gomez, Hadley, aye. Hadley, I, Harper, I, Harper, I, McCarty, McCarty, I, Stone, Wood, aye. Wood, I. That is 6 0. Is that enough to get out? Yes, yes that's enough to get out. Thank you. Congratulations. Next is Senator Hancock on uh, SB 1277. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I'm here to present SB 1277. This is a district bill which would require a supplemental EIR for a project proposed in my district that would have local, state, national, and international impacts on the health and safety of residents of West Oakland, California, the Bay Region, and ultimately the climate of our planet. In June of 2015, constituents came to me with concerns about a proposal to export coal from a new port terminal planned on city land adjacent to the Port of Oakland. It had been described by the developer as a terminal to ship bulk commodities from the United States to countries overseas. Grain, scrap metal, and windmill parts were among the commodities mentioned as examples of what might be shipped. When the city of Oakland entered into a contract with a private developer to develop the port, they did not specify any restrictions on the types of commodities allowed to be shipped. Although the developer had given written and verbal assurances that coal was not being considered as one of the commodities, it turned out that the proposal is, in fact, to transport and ship over 9 million tons of coal from the state of Utah every year. Now, just to put that in perspective and context, California suddenly, uh, currently has three ports that are sometimes used to ship coal. Long Beach, Stockton, and Levin, a, a privately funded port in the city of Richmond. Altogether, they ship about uh, three million tons a year. The proposal for Oakland is over three times that amount, more than nine million tons a year. It would be the largest coal export depot on the Pacific Coast. The, this bill is necessary because the proposed coal project has never had an EIR. The original EIR was done over a decade ago and did not mention coal. The supplemental EIR was done in 2012 and did not mention coal. The scope of the project has changed dramatically and substantially and warrants 
the additional layer of review of a supplemental EIR. Under current CEQA law and the developer's agreement with the City of Oakland, it specified that the City of Oakland and the developer are responsible for the supplemental EIR and the State of California would bear no cost. I believe that SB 1277 is a necessary step. A supplemental EIR will ensure that any impacts from shipping coal through the port and the West Oakland community and the region are addressed. The West Oakland community has been designated by Cal EPA and ViroScreen as a disadvantaged community. That's because its residents are two and a half times as likely to get cancer and twice as likely to go to the emergency room with asthma as other people in uh, other parts of Alameda County. I respectfully ask for your support on this bill and have two speakers with me today who can tell you about the bill and its importance. Erica Maharg, staff attorney from the San Francisco Baykeeper, and Mayor Tom Butt uh, from the city of Richmond. Thank you, witnesses in support. You have uh, two minutes each. Or Try to be close. Thank you. Um, again, my name is Erica Maharg. I'm a staff attorney with San Francisco Baykeeper. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak in support of SB 1277. This bill ensures that the environmental impacts of an Oakland coal export terminal are fully analyzed and mitigated for. As the senator said, the redevelopment of the Oakland Army Base, which includes this project, has had two CEQA documents prepared for it, but coal was not mentioned or analyzed in either document. In 2015, it became public that the export terminal would primarily export coal, and actually 49% of the terminal capacity might be coal or would probably be coal. CEQA requires a supplemental EIR when a major change happens in a project that increases impacts. So exporting coal, creating the West Coast largest coal export terminal is certainly um, a substantial change that will increase public health, environmental, and climate change impacts. Coal trains release particulate matter while they're traveling and unloading and unloading, and we know that particulate matter causes a wide host of severe health impacts. Coal dust also contains toxic heavy metals, which will enter and contaminate San Francisco Bay, which is of particular importance to my organization. And I think it goes without saying that the climate change implication, implications for burning millions of tons of coal each year are significant. These impacts, again, have not been analyzed or mitigated for. Um, again, this bill is needed because Oakland that has provided no assurances that it will do a supplemental EIR. This bill is simple. It is the most efficient and clear way to ensure that the environmental impacts of this project will be analyzed and mitigated for as required by CEQA. For these reasons, we urge the committee to vote in favor of SB 1277. Thank you for your time. Um, I'm Tom Budd, elected mayor of the city of Richmond, a city of about 110,000, less than 10 miles north of Oakland. Our city is bisected by two railroad main lines, BNSF and uh, Union Pacific, uh, both of which could be used to transport coal to Oakland. In fact, UP already transports coal uh, through Richmond to the Levin Terminal, a privately owned terminal in Richmond. The Richmond City Council does not allow coal to be exported from city-owned terminals, and we have little, con but we have little control over privately-owned term the terminals like Levin. The City Council has also taken a position in opposition to the proposed Oakland coal terminal. Richmond is already impacted heavily by pollution, including coal dust, and we get a lot of complaints from citizens about the existing coal shipments. I've seen the coal dust myself. I can tell you that if you go down to public streets around Levin Terminal, uh, you will see them periodically bring out a mechanical street sweeper and, and crews with uh, push brooms uh, to collect that coal dust out of, the, out of the street adjacent to their terminal. Richmond is a low-income com low community largely of color. 
with the lowest median family income of any of 101 cities in the Bay, nine county Bay Area, with the exception of San Pablo, which it completely surrounds. The childhood asthma rate in Richmond is over twice the national average. Additional coal dust from coal trains bound for Oakland would seriously exacerbate Richmond's exposure to existing coal dust, not to mention diesel particulates from the trains. We already have two freeways bisecting Richmond, not to mention the Chevron refinery, which is the largest in the Bay Area. The proposed uh, Oakland coal terminal puts the health of Richmond at the health of Richmond residents at risk, and I urge you to support SB 1277 to fully evaluate the level of this risk to, to my uh, residents. Thank you. Very good. Just over four minutes. Uh, other witnesses in support. Bill McGavin with the Coalition for Clean Air and Support. Kyle Jones with Sierra Club California in support. Ami Amir Val at the Asian Pacific Environmental Network or APEN in support. Julie Snyder with Planning Conservation League. Alex Gibbs on behalf of the adjacent cities of Berkeley and Emeryville in support. Alicia Rivera, Communities for a Better Environment in support. Kathy Durvin from 350 Bay Area, speaking on behalf of 350 San Diego and Fossil Free California in support. Rosanna Carvacho on behalf of the Alameda County Board of Supervisors also in support. Lee Sandal with the International Longshore and Warehouse Unions Northern California District Council in strong support. Uh, Rick Pettis, Sierra Club Sacramento, and PSR, Positions for Social Responsibility in Sacramento, in support. Alyssa Young with Environment California, in support. And Bonnie, Holm Bonnie Holmes, Gen American Lung Association in California, also in support. Gabriel Guerrero from CBE, of support. Michelle Hassan, CCAEJ, in support. Delia Ortega, Communities for a Better Environment, in support. Maria Socorro Vasquez, in support, Communities for a Better Environment. Are there any other witnesses in support? Uh, witnesses in opposition, please. Good afternoon, members. Cassie Gilson on behalf of the California Building Industry Association. And I want to be clear from the outset that CBIA has no interest in the larger coal debate at all. Um, and I'm not going to refute any of the concerns that were raised by the author or the proponents of the bill. But what we do have a great interest in is CEQA. Um, and I feel like my testimony was only almost given for me because this bill is not necessary to force additional environmental review to be done. Um, the drafters of CEQA, as your analysis points out, already included provisions that require by law that if new information, which was reading from the analysis, not known or could not have been known at the time the EIR was certified becomes available, you have to do a supplemental EIR. And um, one of the proponents suggested that this bill is necessary because Oakland has given no assurances that they, they would do a supplemental EIR. Well, I'm often bef before you complaining about CEQA's robust uh, private right of action and litigation. If Oakland doesn't do a supplemental EIR and indeed there's new information that wasn't analyzed, anyone who wants to can file a CEQA lawsuit requiring them to do so. Similarly, if I undergo a CEQA a sequel analysis for a 200 unit housing project and then I turn around and I go to build a 400 unit housing project on that site I cannot do that I don't have the entitlements to do that so in the case of this individual project as I understand it if they proposed one thing and then now are proposing to do another thing there is more than enough within CEQA itself and other bodies of California law that would give the author and all of the pro proponents that came up here the right to go to course 
court and hold Oakland's feet to the fire and force them to do it. So why does CBIA care so much about this? From our perspective, you have a project that has gone through a comprehensive CEQA review. They've survived CEQA's robust litigation period. It's the subject of a vested development agreement with the city. And now we have the legislature coming in and saying, we know you've done that, you've run the CEQA gauntlet already, but this project is now controversial, so we're gonna create a new CEQA process just for you that you now have to, go, have to go through. And from the home builder's perspective, the signal that that sends to our capital markets is horrible. And we already have enough trouble in terms of the carrying costs and the uncertainty around CEQA getting money to build the housing we need to already. But if all of a sudden it becomes clear, oh, it's possible if the right people get behind something, we're gonna have a new CEQA process on top of it here, that's problematic for us. Um, typically we don't pass bills that the law already takes care of. And so we would ask you today um, to find that this is just not necessary, um, particularly given the unintended consequences, I think, for home building and other non-coal related industries in the state. Thank you. Thank you. Other witness. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Francisco Castillo with Union Pacific Railroad. Uh, so UP must also continue to oppose the bill. As common carriers, we are required to carry any legal commodity properly packaged. Railroads are reg regulated federally so that we have consistent requirements that apply equally across our system. If there are studies related to the impacts of the transportation of coal, those studies should be provided to the Federal Surface Transportation Board that regulates the movement of goods by the railroads. Any mitigation adopted by the STB would equally apply in every state we run. This bill, however, would start a patchwork of different requirements for the same legal commodity. Thank you. Other witnesses in opposition? Don Maddy with BNSF Railway in opposition. Mike Rogge with the California Manufacturers and Technology Association in opposition for the reasons previously stated. Thank you. Thank you. Any other witnesses in opposition? Questions or comments from the committee? Mr. Harper. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, the question I have is a clarification based upon uh, uh, remarks by the proponent as well as the first uh, speaker in support. Uh, and help me to understand, is this bill uh, <coughs> seeking to require uh, mitigation for impacts within the city of Oakland or globally or some point in between for coal that's transported through Oakland? You could say all of the above, right? <laughs> Let me just say, the city, the community of West Oakland, a disadvantaged community of low-income people already suffering sky-high asthma rates and cancer rates um, is a major concern to me. I represent those people. I also represent um, the mayors of adjacent cities who are consumed with worry about what is going to happen when these coal cars go through their communities. In fact, we've heard from cities as far away as Davis. I don't know who you guys represent, but every community through which these coal trains go is going to be subjected to everything from the dangers of derailment to the coal dust. Okay? And the fact is, the city of Oakland has known this for over a year. They have not acted. I represent these people, and the fact is, coal was never considered in an EIR. The developer even stated that he was not going to do coal and put in writing that he had no intention of doing coal. It now turns out coal is the product. So it is imperative for the health of the communities along the rail line, many of whom I represent, but not all, uh, for the community of West Oakland, which is heavily impacted, and, um, and it is an interesting comment. You're the Natural Resources Committee. They say, if we get over 360 parts per million, it's over, and we're on track for 400 million now, do we really want to send uh, 10 million tons of coal to China, which is 
trying to cut back on coal, but right now so polluted and dangerous that there's almost open revolt from its citizens. Um, you know, this is a time that a supplemental EIR is required. These conditions should be mitigated and should be required to be mitigated. And um, I would ask for your support in that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Other questions, comments from the committee? Chair's recommendation is I because this, the neighborhoods immediately surrounding this are some of the poorest with the lowest life expectancy of any population in the Bay Area. The idea that that was not studied in the original IR and how that might uh, continue to make sure that because you're poor, you're going to die when you're younger uh, is kind of the basic kind of things that we need to have in, in um, EIR, in EIRs. Um, uh, so, um, uh, to me, it's a, a simple environmental justice issue, um, uh, but also one to protect the sanctity of the process. Um, if something wasn't studied in the original EIR and it should have been, then we should make them do it again. Um, with that, the chair's recommendation is I Would you like to close? I would respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Senator. Please call the roll. Uh, we have a motion by Stone, a second by Garcia. Do you pass and re-refer to appropriations? Williams? Aye. Williams, aye. Jones? No. Jones, no. Garcia? Aye. Garcia, aye. Gomez? Aye. Gomez, aye. Hadley? Harper? No. Harper, no. McCarty? Stone? Aye. Stone, aye. Wood? Aye. Wood, aye. 5 2, your bill is out. Thank you, Thank Senator. Thank you so much. Senator Pavley? 